you take these concepts that Joel preaches, which they're valid and true, at least from my experience, and you don't even you don't even need like necessarily a different mechanism. You just need to offer like a more premium personalized solution and you'll you'll capture that market share like easily because people are sick of the high volume zero personalization businesses. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Joel Irway here and welcome to a very special episode of Sold with Webinars. Now, today I've got a very special guest by the name of David Mendez and um David and I met on a consulting call, 20-minute consulting call, a couple of weeks back. Um, Dave is a, a young and ambitious and upcoming and very successful entrepreneur. David, I believe you're from Portugal. Is that correct? That is correct. And so we had a 20-minute consulting call, um, which if you do not know, you can get if you purchase the High Ticket Courses um, Implementation Program, pay in full, you get a 20-minute bonus consult call with me. So anyway, he joined and booked a call. We hop on the call and he goes, hey, Joel. I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, I just, you know, honestly, I got nothing to really ask you. I just wanted to call and um, and just say thank you. That's the only thing I wanted to say on this call. And I'm like, wow, I, you know, I've had people thank me in the past. But he goes, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and then he told me his story. And he goes, we, uh, I, somebody turned me on to your book a while back and I read it learn the concepts and um, I'm not going to spoil it uh, because I want David to kind of share his results, um, but they're pretty incredible. So he goes, I read the book and then saw this offer, jumped on it just so I could get on a call and uh, and say thank you. So David, welcome, man. I'm excited for you to kind of tell your story. Thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, once again, thank you for uh, everything that you've put out. It has definitely been extremely helpful for me and for my business. Um, and yeah, uh, basically, just to give some background and context, um, I started in the online space around two and a half years ago, give or take. Uh, ever since I have uh, been posting content um, predominantly on Twitter. But the point is, I, I, I got exposed to this whole, you know, make money online type of deal, like around two and a half, three years ago. Then uh, I started uh, following people and, and, and consuming stuff. And, you know, I, I did uh, a few quote unquote side hustles, if you want to call it at the start, like basically everybody does. Um, I got into copywriting very early, very early in my process. So I did a, a bunch of freelancing stuff. I was also running like social media accounts, like sort of team pages, selling like low ticket, you know, ebooks and stuff as an affiliate on that. Um, and then, um, and then I ran an agency for, I'd say four, uh, four to five months, you know, it was somewhat successful. I was making like 15, 20 K a month. It would fluctuate around that. Right. And that's when I decided that, um, I was going to be a sales rep because my goal was obviously I wanted to be a better salesperson. Uh, but my major goal was, okay, like the, probably the quickest path for me to get to where I want to go or achieve the success that I want to achieve is for me to work on these other people's businesses, sort of see behind the scenes of what's going on, actually understand what's going on. And then after I ag aggregate all that experience, go off on my own. So I went out there, um, you know. Uh, bought bought a few courses, uh, a little bit of coaching, right? And I got on a few offers. They were not so great, but eventually I stumbled upon one that I was actually good, and I was starting to you know get my reps in and starting to get used to it, you know, making you know decent amount of money. And then I uh, invested in Colgorn's RCA, um, and then from there, uh, I got access to an opportunity to sell at a company that was doing seven figures a month, um, selling a coaching offer. Right. So I went there, uh, worked there for like seven, or eight months. I was like taking 10 calls every day, working on Saturdays. Just, I was just trying to push as much volume as possible so I could understand, like, obviously the, how to sell better, but also like just, 
it was kind of like um, just something I gave myself a timeline to do. Okay, for this year, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to max it out to the point of diminishing returns. And then once I feel like I've got everything I wanted out of it, I'm going to transition and go out and do my own thing again. So in this time period that I was selling at this company, I brought in a friend of mine um, to sell there too. And like me and this friend, we, we have, we've gone back and eventually he puts me on to your stuff. Like he's like, there's this book and, and this is, this book is kind of like, it's what makes most sense to me. And, and it's kind of counterintuitive to what a lot of people do. Cause <laughs> like what we were seeing at the company that we were selling is that there was a lot of issues on those sales calls. Now, a lot of you might think, oh, you know, doing seven figures a month, you know, they got to be doing something right. And they were, obviously. But that there was a huge, like, the, the, the company was just pushing huge amounts of traffic. But then on, on the back end, like, the sales process was just, like, people were, there were people getting on those calls that had no business being on those calls, basically. Mm -hmm. So this friend of mine, he shares the book with me. And he's like, this is it, man. Like, this is the way, this is how it should be, right? And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to check it out. And I'm like, wow, this makes so much sense, right? So <laughs> I go out there. Um, I get to a point where, you know, I'm, I'm kind of done with, um, I leave the company. I'm uh, I'm like, okay, I think I've got everything I wanted out of this. I'm going to go out on my own. And then all I sold as a sales rep was coaching offers. Like, that's what I knew. Like, so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm going to come up with this offer, right? And I didn't even know if, if, if what I was going to do was going to work because I had this hypothesis in my head and, and all this aggregated information that I had accumulated over time and experience, but I didn't really know if it was going to work. So I go out there. And and uh, and uh, I put together this offer. I already have an audience because I'm sharing all the stuff that I'm doing. People are following me. I put this offer out there that I'm gonna launch people like a coaching program, like done for you with organic marketing. And my claim was that I was gonna make them fifty thousand dollars in the first thirty days, or they wouldn't pay me anything, right? <laughs> and that was legitimately like what would happen. So I got my first client shortly after because it was a, you know, like anybody that was already interested in doing that would sort of just take me up on that. Right. So I gave my first client and, and I put together like all the stuff. Like I go, basically what I do is uh, this guy, he was running like a lead generation agency. Right. So I'm like, okay, this is already in demand. I know for a fact, cause, cause like I've, I've seen it like, so, so people are already buying this. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to have you do me, this is me talking to my client. You're going to, what you're going to do is you, you're going to book these calls with you, with the audience and you're going to run them like a discovery process. Like you're just going to ask these questions to figure out like where the market is at right now. Right. And sort of one of the things we found out is that a lot of people were trying to run lead generation agencies, but they, the biggest hurdle was that they didn't have any case studies and then no, they didn't know how to approach like the offer and, and the messaging without the case studies. Right. So I put together like this sales letter, super, I put it together in the Google doc. Cause, cause kind of what I found is like a lot of people are becoming more and more desensitized to, like DSLs and all this other stuff. Like, <clears throat> so I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this instead. <laughs> so we put, we, I put together the Google doc and then, and then there's this concept from the book that's called the power offer. Right. And this was kind of the game changer. So I put together the thing and then at the end it's, it's a whole power offer at the end of the sales letter, it's a whole power offer. So we use some on the platform that we were using Twitter organic, so I know that platform really well because I've been doing it for, for a while. So we use some strategies. We put the, the sales letter out there. Boom. Like we start getting a bunch of calls. Then we do a power offer 
We get a bunch of calls. And I'm I'm on the phone because I'm doing the whole thing. Because I, I, in, initially, uh, that's my philosophy, I guess, is just you get in, in the trenches and you kind of do the whole thing and validate your process, right? So I do these power offers. Now I've sold. I know how to sell these things, right? So I'm taking these calls. I'm selling them. And boom. Anyway, we make around 65 grand in the first 30 days from an audience of like 4,000 people. Right. This is this is from the lead generation agency. Yeah, for right? the lead generation coaching, right? Coaching. Yeah. So boom, I got my case study. I'm happy. Yes. Now I can leverage this to get more clients. So I put together a case study, same format that I used to write the one for the clients, put it out there, give my second client his name, uh, which is now my business partner. His name is Brooke, and Brooke is he, it's different because he. Like he, he ran a high ticket e-commerce, uh, high ticket drop shipping store. So basically, I'm sure people have seen the, the, the low ticket version of that, right? But he runs a sort of a different model and he's been extremely successful at it. So he made like 5 million in revenue with a around 25% take home in like his first 14 months of running the store, right? So like he comes to me and I'm like, I want to teach this. And then I just saw the case study and I want to work with you. And like, again, I leveraged the power offer to, to get that too. Um, so I'm like, okay. Um, and then he tells me what he does and I'm like trying to understand. And I'm like, I think this is a winner. Like I, I really think this is going to crush because this solves every problem that that specific market deals with. Basically, this business model is just that business model, but just better in every way. Right. So I'm like, I think we have a winner here. So I do the same process, my, my launch process. I, I put together the, the, the case study and I integrate some power offers in there and we put it out there and it's really long. So initially, like the first couple of days, like it takes a little bit to, to, to have traction because it's long and people, a lot of people just, some people read right through it, but not everybody does. Right. But then we put we put a we put out the the power offer the raw like direct offer to the audience and and like i structured everything and i knew it was a winner like it was a no brainer offer like it was so good boom like our calendar's just full like we have people dming us like oh i can't book a call because the calendar is full wait until tomorrow it's going to open again <laughs> like so so like again i'm closing these deals and basically we make a quarter million dollars profit in the first 30 days, right? <laughs> and from solely from organic traffic. So was this his existing audience? So you went to his his social media audience? Yeah, but he only had like 10k followers. It's not that much. Like, yeah. but it, it was so good that you know it just crushed. So Brooke, which is now my business partner, he's like dude, we got to, we got to just stay together in this and, and just scale it as much as we can. And I'm like, you know what? I already put all the work to make it happen. Might as well, you know? So we partner up 50, 50 on, on all the profits. And now it has been give or take four months since we have launched that offer. We have now we're, we're past 800 K profit. Again, solely organic, um, and we're on pace to hit a million before the fifth month mark. And and it, the main, the sort of the core mover of the business was just learn how to make a power offer, basically. Um, and his, this is the how story. How much is the coaching program? How much is the coaching program? Uh, at the time, for 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 the time being, it's five thousand eight hundred. Um, so the reason it's that is like we have um we have tested it going higher like the thing about because this is kind of like a business opportunity offer right but the thing about business opportunity offers is that um like at certain prices like you start to see a little bit of price resistance mm -hmm. that impacts conversions a little bit too much and it's just not worth it like the the amount of less conversions you're getting it's not worth yep. the, the price bump. 
So like yep. we found this so far to be like a good price. Like our program is also great. It's basically delivering results on, on autopilot and it's, it's why it's also growing as quickly as it's growing. Cause like we already have a ton of social proof, even though we only launched four, four months ago, but truthfully, what I learned from this whole thing and, and going back to, to the book is that I think inherently a lot of people just overcomplicate this stuff. Um, and it, it kind of made me realize that if you just kind of find out what people are looking for and like what the inefficiencies in the market are, and you can like create something that solves that and frame it in the right way and then use strategies that like make that crystal clear and, and straight to the point rather than using marketing to sort of disguise that and, and, you know, gimmicky stuff. Like if you just do that, you're going to make a lot of money. That's kind of like what I've learned from this experience. Um, mm. And the other thing too is there's this book called Mode One. It's a, it's a dating book, but I think, I think like the principles of that book kind of overlap with the principles of your book in different contexts. But I think the main point is like, if you want something, right? So if you're running a business, I'm assuming you want to make profit, right? That's the sole purpose of a business. Or if you want people to pay you for something, probably the easiest way to do that is to just like figure out what it is, tell them that you have that and just letting them come to you like that, you know? And that's basically what we've been doing. Um, now we're, we're trying to think if, if we're, we want to go to paid, but the thing, and, and this is, I know this is a little bit now sort of inside of what's going to be next, but the thing about paid that I'm kind of understanding is, and I might be wrong. This might be a wrong assumption, but what I'm thinking at this point is like, if I'm going to use paid, right? Clearly the, the way the, the whole space is going is towards audience, like because the the battle for attention is becoming more and more fierce over time people are making bolder and bolder claims really everything is just people are getting more and more desensitized to marketing right so my thought process now is kind of like we just we're going to leverage paid still but we're just going to leverage it to aggregate audience rather than um directly market to cold markets let the audience come in, warm up, and then just make offers to them. And that's our whole thought process. Just make a direct offer, you know, use use the power offer, um, continuously do that, and just aggregate more audience and, and market to, to that audience because that audience already knows you rather than, you know, going to paid and having to crack a VSL by doing 40 iterations of it and then run a business at 40% profit margins, you know, <laughs> um, that's just me though. Like I might be wrong uh, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not showing that I'm not, I'm not saying that that's inherently wrong either. I'm just saying that like right now we've been steadily over 200 K a month since launch, right? Solely through organic and we only tapped into one acquisition channel. Now we're, expanding to other acquisition channels, other social media platforms. And like our margins are like high, like we're talking in the 90%. So it's kind of like, maybe I scale slower, but I would rather scale slower. I have a business that actually works, coaching program that actually works. And when things break, they don't break like in an astronomical way where we just get wiped out. Um, they break and we can fix it and then we can, can continuously and progressively keep scaling upward. So when you first discovered the book, like you had already been in as a sales rep and taken sales calls, you're kind of in the high ticket game already. Um, you mentioned your friend who recommended it said like, this is the way, like this is the way it should be. What right. do you mean about that? And like, because you said when you were working for that seven figure a month company, like there were a lot of people that are on calls that shouldn't have been on calls. So right. 
what was what was the revelation that you had and what did you mean by this is the way that it should be yeah so what i meant by that is it made me understand so basically in the book there's this core principle of like you ideally you only want to market to the people that are already looking for the thing that you're selling right it's like the the little the, the little triangle diagram mm -hmm. uh, you can buy the book and check it out like but basically the people who are closer to that conversion point basically and the major thing about that 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 kind of blew my mind was was realizing that everybody else is already doing all the marketing for you like everybody else is already selling people on the beliefs that they need or, or or selling them on business models or selling them on whatever it is and but the thing about the big guys right is that they're they're at such a level of scale that people just kind of inherently know that if they go with them they're just not going to get what they're looking for in terms of service right so what you can do is you can literally like you could literally go to the people that have already been marketed to are already bought into the process are already bought into like they want to do that and you could just directly market to them and capture all of that market share rather than trying to create the man from thin air and 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 be the guy who basically pays all the ad costs to get everybody bought into something you could just be the guy who goes directly there and profits off of that which is basically what we did right like to to make it relevant what we did is okay there's already this huge audience all these people have heard of drop shipping all everybody and their mothers wants to run a drop shipping store right like this market already exists it's already there they've already seen the youtube videos and the free trainings and the vsls but the truth is that business model as it stands today is just not that efficient so what we did, like this was literally like one of our main things in our in our messaging, which is if you've tried drop shipping in the past and you failed, here's this, right? And here's why it's better, right? And then people look at it and they're like, okay, like it's clearly better. So so let's just go do that instead. Right? And that's what kind of that was the game changer for me, was kind of understanding like that I didn't have to like put all this effort and energy into try to create demand for something. I just, I could just tap into the, the flow of the market that already exists, get myself in, in front of the people that are already looking for a solution and, and just sell to them. And again, you can only do that so much, right? Cause there's only a percentage of the market that's there, but the, the reality is you can make a lot of money just doing that. And I think that's the other thing I kind of understood, like at that point yeah. when I read it, it's kind of like, oh, like I don't have to, you know, tap into all these layers of the market to make a million dollars. I can just <laughs> go sell to these people instead, you know, and that was kind of like the, the revelation, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. So when you were talking to those people that should not be on the phone, did you, out of curiosity, did that mean that you had to do too much convincing? Like these people were not convinced on the system. They weren't convinced on the process yet. And so you as the sales rep, it was your responsibility to kind of like educate them on the phone and then try and convince them to buy. Is that, is that what you mean? Exactly. So basically what I meant, what, what I meant by that is that that's going back to that diagram, right? Once you reach a certain level of scale, like these people were operating at 1.5 to $2 million a month. Right. And the reality is once you reach a certain level of scale, you just like, you maxed out the, the niche almost like you need to start tap tapping into other markets and go there and convince these people that they need this thing that they don't even know what it is. And it's th it, that it's for them and like, and then you get these people on these calls and they don't even know why they're, why they're there really. Like they're just there because they saw some ad or whatever, but like they, they have no business being there. It's kind of like, you're just there. And, and to be honest, to be fair, that taught me how to be a great salesperson, like to be fair, 
Uh, so it's a great learning opportunity because like to close a, a lot of these people, you, you had to be good. Like you had to really be on lock. But at the same time, it's just me understanding like there's no way this is how these things are supposed to be. Like <laughs> this just doesn't make sense, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that level of high volume. What happened is, is inherently made me understand like there's got to be a better way to do this. Then I came across the book and I was like, oh, this is what makes sense, of course, right? So, and, and that's the thing. And, and I think the key thing about the book too is that it teaches you how to cut through all that, basically. And that's what I liked about it. It's kind of like you don't have to deal with any of these people. You could just craft and design offers and messaging directly to the people already looking for solutions and then that's all that's only the people you attract and then you don't have to deal with any of this garbage basically mm -hmm. which is a pain in the ass really like I, I can tell you from experience as as someone was again doing very high volume when i was there like you're you're just to give you some metrics like let's say i would get 10 calls booked in one day in my calendar right five or six of them wouldn't show up but then one of them would uh one of them would one or two of them would have no money like zero like it's no possible way of even making this happen to begin with and then another one would cancel and then there would be the one who would be somewhat qualified but didn't really have the awareness yet and then i would have to like go into this entire process of like trying to almost like do again the education side of things which is something you touch upon too which is just that's what i've realized is that when you have to over educate a, a, an avatar or, or a market it's probably a sign that your your offer and messaging is just wrong because that shouldn't be the case like because mm -hmm. there's already people looking to buy like if you're having to over-educate, then probably something wrong in the process. It makes me so happy to hear that you got those insights and that you took it to heart because you're 100% right. Like the key concept of the book is let other people do the marketing for you. Like you just need to collect sales. How do you just like step in flow and hold the money at the bottom of the barrel? Like just like, hey, right. I've got like, come here. Right. And people don't understand that, you know, we get so infatuated with the world of marketing. Like I'm part of the digital marketing world and nobody really differentiates what is different between marketing and sales. There's a right. huge difference. There's a huge difference. It all just kind of gets lumped into the digital marketing bucket. Right. But until you realize that like your starting block with any offer needs to be at the top 10% of the market who's already willing to buy. Right. Yep. They're, they have tried and they've failed. If you want the messaging shortcut, you want to know how to speak to somebody, right. talk to somebody who's tried and failed. What are they thinking about? What did they try? What did they fail? What, what did they fail at? Why did they fail? Why did it not work? And how is your solution better? Like it actually just comes, it's as simple as that. It's yes. as simple as that. Like how, what did they try? Why did they fail? Why is that, why is that methodology inferior to yours, what about your methodology is superior and why is your methodology going to get this specific person results? Like if you can answer those questions, like you've got what it takes to make money and to create a great offer and yep. at least speak to somebody and uh, uh, speak to a qualified lead. Um, so I I'm glad that you got those takeaways. Out of curiosity, did you have any um, like concerns as you were reading? Like, did you have any disbelief? Like, just like, oh, this is like, were you, you know, were you skeptical at all of any of it working? No, no, because I had context prior. So, like, to me, just immediately made intuitive sense. Like, because it, it, it just, if you think about it from a logical standpoint, right? Like every market is subdivided into buckets, right? As as it is explained in the book. 
And as you, as it is also explained in the book, every market already has people looking to buy things. I buy things all the time. Like, so, so it's kind of like, just, I didn't have any skepticism because I had the context of the other side of the coin where I'm being part of this business where I'm seeing what it's like when it's not like that. Right. So I'm like, this clearly is not efficient at all. Like this side of things is not efficient at all. This makes intuitive sense to me. It was kind of like, okay. Cause, cause again, I'm, I'm on the other side. I like, I'm at this business that is doing, spending all this money to, to generate awareness, to, to get the influencer in front of people's faces and tell them, Hey, this is it. This is the business opportunity. This is, this is it. And then I'm like, okay, so clearly there's already people spending the money to advertise, right? To get people aware, to get them sold into something, right? So if I just come come there, right? And and that's the, the beauty of it too. I feel like, I think we're getting at this point of, uh, we'll call it evolution of, of our space where like you don't even have to be like, your thing can be the same thing, but if you just offer like a, a more personalized sort of premium solution, like people will buy from you rather than the guy who's spending like hundreds of thousands every month on the advertisement because people are kind of realizing, and this is just the industry that we're in, but the reality is most solutions in the market are inefficient and they don't work. And it's not because they're inherently bad or it's not because they're the the tactics that people are teaching are bad it's because what makes them what makes people adhere and and follow through a process is not the information or how it's packaged or like it's not that it's the support and the accountability and i'm going to design a process to make sure that you do the inputs necessary to eventually get to the point where you're getting the result that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And the truth is like, if you want to have a business that actually generates results, like the only way to, to truly do that is to have at least some level of personalization of premium, like solution where you're actually helping these people. You're not just giving them a bunch of information for them to go through. We're actually like implementing processes and, and helping them out, like actually make this thing happen. So that's the beauty of it. The beauty of it, like if I, if I had to like come up with some genius insight right, right now, uh, but the beauty of it would be like you take these concepts that Joel preaches, which they're valid and true, at least from my experience. And you don't need, you don't even need like necessarily a different mechanism. You just need to offer like a more premium personalized solution and you'll, you'll capture that market share like easily because people are sick of the high volume, um, just zero personalization businesses. That's mm -hmm. what I, this, this is what I found like just from being in the space in general and having a pulse on the market. So, so everything's up. The, the good news for the people listening is everything's really up for the taking. Like you can just look at any competitor, obviously learn. Ideally you come, come with some level of expertise and knowledge, right? That you can actually offer. I think that misses for a lot of people too, but <laughs> um, that's another issue, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that, but um you just look at the marketplace, right? You just look at all these people spending hundreds of thousands every single month to advertise. They're getting in your face. I'm sure you're seeing them. And you're just like, okay, that's clearly high volume. That's operating at a, at a volume of scale that there's simply no possible way that those that amount of people are getting what's being claimed, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go there, offer it like something that's actually more personalized, more premium, charge way more and people still buy from me because that's what they're looking for. Does that make sense? The key thing there is, you know, differentiation. A, a new mechanism isn't necessarily differentiation. Differentiation can be 
how you provide the result for other people. And you right. nailed it on the head. Like with the, with the explosion of coaching programs and courses, like a new segment of the market is existing, is, is coming to fruition. Like more, it's, it's great. Like the market is growing, but the, uh, and the number of people who have tried and failed is growing as well. And if exactly. you don't under, if you, if you can learn one thing, which is like, if you only speak to the tried and failed market and you just present a better solution, a better delivery, like you will get people to say yes. Like that's the easiest way to speak to somebody is how can you provide a different service or more personalized service? Because you're right. I mean, there's, there's always, you know, kingpins in the marketplace who are scaling through paid ads. And if you know that they're not servicing their clients and you can provide a different service or actual personalized service and actually get them results, like you can scoop that up. It's like, it's once That's you it. exit the matrix and you see it through that lens, like you can't unsee it. And you now become like a level 100 salesperson without going through any sales training. Because like, I don't right. teach sales calls, right? That's the other thing is our industry, when they train people on sales calls, it's like they're training based on an unaware market. Like if you have to go through some sort of hardcore sales training of like pressing on the pain and uncovering the solution and building desire, it's like you're doing an entire, like you're doing marketing and you're doing selling. Like that's just condensing it all onto a one hour phone call. And right. It's very ineffective. It's very ineffective. And so trust me, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. People nope. just want to know that they're going to be able to get a result. And um, if you can offer, uh, if you know what your market is experiencing, what they're trying and failing, why they're failing, and fix that specific problem, you'll have clients for life. And that's it too. And, and I think uh, if you don't mind me, Adding on top of that, um, it's also understanding that a lot of, and this is a little bit of a more advanced concept, but I think everybody's just so obsessed with, um, I got to scale, I got to scale, I got to scale, I got to like push this to like how, and it's mostly an ego thing is what I found, like, because I fell into that trap too at some point. But at the end of the day, it's also understanding like, Let's say hypothetically you find you find this gap in the market, you present a solution. Like if you actually do a good job, like you you only need to market so much because you probably you you basically have a self sustaining business of people that have already bought from you and just want to buy more things. You know, mm -hmm. this is another thing, another concept I think people don't get, which is like it's all about scaling, acquiring new, new customers. I need more acquisition, more acquisition. Like I need to to put more money into ads, whatever. Like. And is you don't really need any of that. You could just sell to the same people, like, and and that's the that's the other thing too. Kind of like uh, another key thing inside that I got from the book was kind of like um, just formulating these offers in a way that gets these these people like a, a somewhat fast, quick result that gets them like extremely happy, and then just starting a longer term relationship based on that that's our entire approach for our offer right like we're getting these people these results in like in a somewhat fast um timeline for what the business model allows obviously but then like we already got them from point a to point b now we can like we could just figure out what the problems at point b are and just develop new solutions sell to the same customers and you can and again, I'm not saying that me and my business partner do want to scale the business. Obviously, we do, but like we're not in a rush to, like, we're not in a rush to to do that. Like we we would rather just continuously do that, serve our customers at the highest level, because ultimately, that's what makes a business last to begin with. Is just serve your customers, actually mm -hmm. deliver on the things that you say. And if you do that, not only you have happy customers, but like, I, I think people don't really realize how much, especially like now with access to the internet and everybody having personal brands these days, I think people don't really realize how quickly it is to 
to like just have your name tainted um and hear bad stuff like i've heard bad things from a lot of again the the people at the top right and and their solutions and now i'm not i'm not trying to posture as oh those people are bad like inherently no cuz operating a business at that level is a completely different animal i've seen it behind the scenes right and and i know that a lot of these people don't necessarily have bad intentions they're just they just they want to profit and they want to scale and they want to do all these things and just to keep that up with the customer success is difficult right but ultimately also understanding that like you don't need all this extreme acquisition like all you need is just a round of customers who are already again I've already tried I've already tried I've already failed sell them the better solution give them the premium service make them feel great they're going to come back to you and you can run that business and then the cool thing about that too is because because you're going to make so much money on continuation like you stop being in a rush for the acquisition like you're like oh, I, I can acquire, acquire these clients no problem I'm not in a rush to scale cuz most of my money is going to be made on the back end anyway to ascension and continuation you know so there's another key thing from 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 the book basically <laughs> <laughs> I love it dude you know it's it's a lot of brilliance from you know somebody who has who's um been in the marketplace for you know a relatively short amount of time like two and a half years like i i say that with all the respect in the world is like when people get it the faster you get it the faster you can grow like it does not take much if it takes being able to speak clearly to a yes. present pain that people are in it takes be knowing what they've already done and it takes being willing to do something different to fulfill on a result and give them a different vehicle to get a result and offering some sort of some sort of different service that you know will get them results and if you can figure that out like you have a winning offer like that's that's it that's it and and uh and the other thing too like just to to just one add one last nugget hopefully useful to the audience is the reason I've um and and as you said like I've I've been in the game for two and a half years like maybe on you know maybe that's to some people that's a long time but there's also the con I didn't know any of this like I had zero like absolutely zero business experience or exposition prior and I think and this is I'm not trying to brag or anything it it has nothing to do with that but I think the reason why I've succeeded somewhat fast is simply because I've I've always been willing to to go where other people wouldn't even look into going and and I think I think there's an an errant problem with a lot of people in this marketplace where they think that running the a business is just this thing where you know it's it's not going to be work it's not going to be this or that and you know um for me like even with us right launching these offers you know I was I was, I was talking to my market and and I think that's a, a another thing that people don't do at all like just go talk to the people man like go talk to them like right now <laughs> like find a way to communicate with them get them on a call and get them speaking like what okay what are you looking to achieve and what have you tried to achieve that in the past and why did it fail like why do you think it failed right and 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 like did you try anything else and 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 just get this information directly to the market i feel i feel like a lot of people operate or try to come up with offers based on assumption where it's kind of like oh yeah this is what what these people want right cuz you see all the other all the other ads or the competitors you're like yeah this is what people want i'm just going to do that too and it's kind of like maybe it's not <laughs> you're not going to know if you don't talk to them and that's the thing too like i think I, the reason i've somewhat succeeded quickly is because i'm willing to do that sort of non you know pretty work cuz cuz again like 
our our proposition is oh like come get this free consult or yeah it's just like and and we did like a hundred of those right and that's if you sum up the minutes it's a substantial amount of time for quote unquote no return right and people are like oh if it's not going to give me a return i'm not going to do it you know screw that but it's kind of like it all goes back to the underlying principle if you just figure out what these people want what they're looking for what they've already tried everything else like that comes after that is easy but if you don't everything else that comes after that is hard mm -hmm. cuz now you're operating on assumption you're creating offers based on assumption you don't know if it's going to resonate you're creating a funnel based on assumption you don't know if it's going to resonate you're trying to use an acquisition system based on assumption and then it doesn't work and then you're trying to figure out okay what is the problem but literally all of these pieces right are already being influenced for the fact that you're operating on assumption because it's kind of like if you think about it, every business is really the same it's the market or the subsection of the market it's the offer it's the funnel it's the acquisition channel it's a sales process or sales system it's the onboarding the fulfillment and scaling is just doing all those things over and well. over again <laughs> you know so, so exactly so if you if you just take the time to make that initial part of that feedback loop uh, properly then all of these things that come after that become easy like like you were saying like you don't have to hard sell people into making it happen because it's what they're already looking for if it is they're going to buy like and i guess that's the principle i've i've kind of been operating from which is if i find out what people want and i get that exactly that in front of them they're going to buy cuz why wouldn't they right mm -hmm. so so that's it like and and i think i learned a lot of this of this obviously from experience too but just i think the book what it did for me just helped me collect uh connect a lot of these dots that were sort of like scattered in my brain somewhat and then i i read it right and i'm like oh <laughs> all of this makes extreme sense like this is this is it right yep and then just applying those frameworks and not being afraid of testing it out in the marketplace i think that's another thing too like people just they're afraid of looking a certain way, like if they have messaging that doesn't resonate or whatever. Like it's all game of testing. Yeah. Like just go out there, find out, and test. And if it wins, like what's what's the downside? Okay, if if it if it's not good, okay, like you get feedback. You go try to find another thing, another off, another angle, another message. Like if it wins, all you need is one big winner, and you're gonna know. Trust me. Once you have that. You're gonna know, like it's mm -hmm. gonna show. Like everything is easy when you have that. That's the thing to understand too is once you have a winning offer, man, acquisition is easy, sales is easy, like fulfillment is easy because it's to the same type of customer. Like every time, like you're basically just selling to very similar archetypes of customers. So the fulfillment is less complex. So therefore. It's easier to to deliver and to make it autopilot. Yep. So basically, every once you have that, everything is easy. So most of the time should be on trying to find that. Yep. And that's basically my whole philosophy to heavily influenced by your stuff for sure. <laughs> so Dave, before we wrap up, I want to ask you one final question. Right for somebody who is listening right now and kind of considering whether or not this is, you know, the right methodology, the right opportunity for them, what would you tell them, right? How, what would you speak, what would you say to them to, um, help address that concern? What I would say is, is basically this, if you, um, if, if you have already tried things in the past and I'm sure most people listening to this have tried something to some extent, right? You don't get to, to come across guys like Joel if you, unless you're somewhat already exposed to the game, right? To some extent, right? If you've already tried something it, and it probably hasn't worked, right? And you've just listened to this conversation. 
think about like what intuitively makes sense to you and 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 that's what that's what really resonated with me the most about this entire way of viewing marketing sales business whatever things should intuitively make sense like this is sort of like a a principle i've kind of followed and has served me extremely well if it doesn't intuitively make sense like if you're if you're if you're listening to something or watching a youtube video or watching a webinar or free training whatever you want to call it or watching a course and you're going through it and you're like like this sounds complicated like this sounds if it sounds that way it's probably not a good approach now if you just listen to this whole thing and you've like i've done this right with relatively you know not a lot of experience i, I mean it's sh- relatively quick timeline and you've just listened listen if you just listen to me and joel break this down and explain things this way it probably makes intuitive sense and if it does make intuitive sense it's probably right and and that's the thing too is listening to your gut when things intuitively make sense which is kind of what i did and it worked for me like extremely well and now i'm running this business as I said, we're about to hit a, a million dollars <throat> in less than five months. And we're going to scale until past that point, obviously. But that's not even the point. Like, you don't, if you're, if you're like stuck at some level or if you're starting out, you don't need to make a million dollars either. That's the thing, too. Like, you just need to find something that works, catch a break. And then just build on top of that. And this is it. Like if you're starting it, if you're starting right now, there's no better way to cut through the noise than doing this. Like there really isn't because there's already people out there with money in their bank accounts looking for something. You can just get in the middle of that and capture that revenue. And this is basically what we've been talking about this entire podcast and I mean, again, if you're starting or even if you've already tried things in the past and didn't really work, then then I think this is really what makes most intuitive sense if you think about it truthfully. Yeah. So that's what I would say to somebody. And yeah, I mean, what, what do you have to lose, right? Mm-hmm. Give it a try. See what happens. What do you have to lose anyway? You know? Yeah. Maybe your ego gets a little bit bruised, but who cares, man? (laughs) Dude, this is great. I always love talking to people who um, get the big idea and they really get it, right? Because let's be honest, you know, if we're trying to make sales, we're in the, most of us are in the startup world, right? We're we're trying to start a new offer and it's going to like, you're going to fail. Like that, you know, if, if everybody could start a business and everybody could launch an offer, right? Everybody would be good billionaires, right? It's just not, right. it's not how it works. The reason why, like I wanted to reduce that failure rate as much as possible. I cannot reduce it to zero because every market is different. And it's just, you know, you may have to also adapt to your offer. Like you may have to change something about your offer. And a lot of my, like I've worked with many, many, many clients. And there are some people that are just so, you know, right. stubborn that they're like, no, like this is the result that I get. I'm not going to change anything. I'm like, all right, good luck. You know, it's like, right. You have to listen to your market and you have to, if, if we want to reduce the failure rate of entrepreneurs and startups, you have to understand that this is how you get market feedback. Like this is the, sh- this is the most inexpensive way to get market feedback. Hey, I've got an offer. Do you want it? Yes or no? Like, here's what it'll do. Do you want it? Yes or no? And the more no's you get, the better off you'll be. Like, as long as you're willing to adapt, like, the, the like get no as fast as you can. And maybe, yep. like, you will strike gold and you'll, f- and you'll hit a winning vein and it'll just blow up. And, you know, that's also, like, one of the, one of the funniest things before we wrap up, the funniest things that I, I see is, like, if I'm working with like a, a newer entrepreneur, like they've never launched anything in, in, in uh, uh, right <laughs> in the past, they've never failed. Like they, they aren't tainted yet. 
and we work on an offer and like my offer radar is like buzzing. Like I'm like, oh, this is a great offer. And we launch it and then they just crush it out of the park like immediately. They don't know what it's like to struggle. So, you know, they'll come to me and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I only I had a no show today or like three no shows in the past like four days. I'm like, yeah, but you also made seven sales in your first 14 days with right. like $1,000 in ad spend. I'm like, you don't right. know how good you have it. Like, they're so mad. Like, oh, I, I'm sick of these no shows. It's like, you know, it's a catch right. to too. It's like you can you can uh, you get both sides of the coin. But um, anyway, yeah. one one last thing, if I may. Um, and this is, this has helped me tremendously too. Uh, the way I see business is just a very simple equation, which is business is providing supply to an already, already existing demand at a profit. That's it. Like, it's not a vehicle for me to get validation from my peers. It's not a vehicle for me to pursue my passions. It's not a vehicle for me to, uh, you know, in, in, enhance my lifestyle. No, that it's, it doesn't serve any of those things. To me, that's what it is. It's just business is supply and demand and profit. That's it. And I think a lot of people would take value of just removing themselves of that equation because I feel like the reason why a lot of people fail is they conflict, they, they conflict their personal interests and desires with business and then you're trying to solve multiple things with one equation and obviously it doesn't work. What I would say is just if you're in business, you're in the game of serving. That's it. Like you're here to serve people. Cause that's the only way you're gonna make money. It's by other people giving to you. You're not the Fed, right? You can't print money out of the sky. So the only way for you to acquire that is by other people giving to you. Giving it to you. The only way for other people to give it to you is to be of service and to actually provide something that's valuable. And the more you can remove yourself and your ego out of that equation, and the more you can just, okay, I don't really matter here. What does my market need? Mm -hmm. Like, what is my market, market struggling with? Can I tap in and be of service? And if you can, you're going to make money. Like, Give people what they want, they'll give you what you want. It's very simple. Amen, brother. Awesome. Well, David, where can people go find you? Where can they go follow you? Where can they check you out? Yeah, so I, um, I'm on Twitter at Real David Mendes. I'm on Instagram at The Based Mendes, and that's basically it. Um, probably start on YouTube soon, but um, for the time being, that's where you can find me. Uh, if you have... Anything at all, anything you want to ask me, um, you need help with anything, my DMs are open. If you're reasonable, I'll, re I'll respond to you. <laughs> um, and, um, and that's it. I, I hope uh, everybody listening took value out of this. I appreciate you having me on. It has been an honor and a pleasure. And once again, I want to say thank you for everything that you do and everything that you've put out there. Um, and yeah, I hope, uh, I hope this is useful. Awesome. I appreciate you, man. So if you're listening right now and uh, you want to get the same book that David got that changed the trajectory of, of turning him in from a sales rep to an offer owner to making nearly a million dollars in um, five or six months, head over to Amazon and search for high ticket courses, or you can get the digital book bundle and go to book.highticketcourses.com. Appreciate all of you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.